So here we are with episode... So here we are with the final episode, episode 12 of the Demon Girl Next Door, season 2. Last episode, we, uh, we're, we're finally back in school. Summer vacation is finally over. But now we are going to meet Oogaloo, the, per uh, the demon, the, the, the familiar that is residing within Mikan's heart and is the person that's causing this whole curse in the first place. So uh, we'll, we'll just have to see who this Oogaloo is. If you guys like the video, like the video. If you dislike it, dislike it. I do have my full length up on Patreon and early access on a YouTube membership to which, by the way, those two access are ways for you to give me recommendations and suggestions for community voted polls like this series that was voted by you guys, the community. But all the suggestions come from patrons and the YouTube members. Anyways, that and that, let's get, let's get started. <laughs> <sighs> so it'll lose effectiveness. Okay, if you use it too often. Oh my fucking god. The shit, dog? What the fuck? Okay, that's 8 million yen. Jesus Christ. <laughs> This is less stressful. Let's just leave it up to fate. <laughs> Instead of making the decision ourselves. Got the first thing that they come in. It's just Yugo fucking touching Momo. <laughs> I feel something. It's soft. <laughs> and afterwards, immediately poking at her stomach. That woman right there. Saw that in my anime list and it just says, Andre's mom. And I'm like, what? <laughs> She looks like her sister at the very least. The fuck? Did she also get into a fucking pack with a demon? <laughs> the origami bird. The demon's new ally. Snack staff. I'll save these for later. Oh. It's just Mikan. Now you're dead. <laughs> oh! Oh, quick, dude! Holy shit! Dark side buns. Demonic dark side buns. Speak to in English. If it's from in Mesopotamia, but it, I don't think it speaks English. No. Sense of hearing or sight. Huh. By churning chaos. I'm gonna create an ultimate weapon. <laughs> oh, it's just. Well, it's it can churn, all right. <laughs> We'll have to separate Mikan. <laughs> well, you are in the dreamscape. Is that a... The tail looks like a time for a chat. Anyways, you're here for tea time? <laughs> Anyways, I'm gonna nap now. <sighs> I was just thinking about like just, you know, just slap her. What would Shamiko do? Oh, she did grab some candy. Henry's <laughs> coming? We're all napping! Damn, she's just coming into this room. <laughs> it's a triple suicide out here. <laughs> Oh, 
<laughs> so Audrey just comes in and now mumbles all along. Understandable. <laughs> you have meat? A meat staff! Let's go! Oh, she's too tired though. Doesn't have enough MP. A porridge staff. Dude, a staff for everything. Yeah, she seemed like a meat eater. Damn, just really cuts right to it. Talk with easy words. This is why you need you go here. <laughs> we all go home and party. What about her? Understandable. <laughs> I only made to protect Mikan. Vessel? Very bad. I no need body. I no go away. <laughs> talk like a caveman. I see no outside. Mikan san, I very good. <laughs> oh no! Mikan, no feel good! <laughs> I actually failed job the whole time. <laughs> she just goes to Momo instead. What's the reason you have form? Well, she disappears and dies! Reason for existence, nothing at all. I familiar! <laughs> it normal! Hey, you wanna come into my heart? <laughs> Says Yuko. <laughs> Well, how about we tone it down a little bit, you know? <laughs> I guess you don't have a heart. <laughs> oh, sad I no see her. Oh. <laughs> oh, shit. Damn, just chill code for familiar. <laughs> In a full Nelson. Hell yeah, dude. Well, try again and be better, Oogaloo! <laughs> Take the easy way out. <laughs> hip hip hooray for my friends in town. <laughs> Oh, it's like an actual proper summoning circle. Oogaloo gets reemployed. <laughs> Gotta put you to work. Oh, that's what you get for coming here. Help me summon a new life! Magical circle, too small and messy. Offering a fried chicken? Wow. <laughs> she hates this! <laughs> she hates citrus! <laughs> Wow, raised her from birth. <laughs> She's a mommy now. Exactly, it was your dad who was wrong. 
Oh god, I think she's just coming out. <laughs> the budget into the billions. What the fuck? I have so many questions. <laughs> she wrote it directly on the wall. <laughs> High grade magic. Well, oh, oh, hold on, we got Liko. Hold on. <laughs> oh! Anri, yeah, I was like, Anri's right. Yeah, we. we <laughs> Tail fur of a mythical beast. The cat? The cat. Sham Who? Oh, sorry, nothing. <laughs> this is so just sure as hell. Okay, he doesn't even have a tail. What? Are <laughs> His tail's hidden behind the bandages, I guess. <laughs> Damn, I'm really prepared for everything. <laughs> wow, what a coincidence. Oh shit. What a quirk of fate. Damn, oh my god. This was wow, that's some awesome karage right there. Would faint from eating them. <laughs> An ass load. <laughs> A long talk about those tendencies of yours. Oh my god, all the high uh, all the stu students over here? Yeah, the sports day committee. <laughs> wow. So cool, so good. <laughs> She's the person who lives on top uh, under in the fucking ceiling. All right, now sh shove her the chicken right in her mouth. <laughs> Fried chicken was yummy. <laughs> we didn't put any lemon juice in it. You're gonna come with us to school. <gasps> You're your own demon. <laughs> Go to work. <laughs> You're an adult now, Ugulu. <laughs> Uh-oh. I go now. <laughs> Goodbye. Ah! Uh, <laughs> damn. <laughs> yes, you are my daughter now. Wow! We've got Oogaloo now. Oh, it certainly is, uh... One way to end a, a, a finale, huh? With a, uh, you know, rather wholesome... Solve. <laughs> boss! You are Mikan's boss! Oh, shit! Oh, you are boss! I approve! Hell yeah! You're smaller than her, what the fuck? Oh, 
Mm, another comparison to her and Sakura. The fuck, dude? Stop fucking talking about her height! She can't fucking control her height! And that's it. Alright, that's just the chaos. Alright, well, I am going to write my notes and we'll be right back to the center. Alright, so that was episode 12 of the Demon Girl Next Door Season 2. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments down below. You know that I always like talking to you guys. For me, I thought that this was... Uh, but it's a pretty good episode, you know? It ended on a, 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 a... It all ended on a very wholesome note. So that's good. That's fine and dandy. Uh, I didn't really write too many notes just because I felt it was... A little straightforward, but it's, it, it, you know, if, if anything I'm missing, feel free to talk about it. And since we are on the end, uh, at the end of the series, right? If there's anything that's missing from the manga all the way up to this part, not anything beyond the manga, you know, feel free to write it all down here now. <laughs> and I won't be upset at you. <laughs> so feel free to do that. Just not, again, any any spoilers for, like, Onward in the series. Just anything that's, like, from this spot to all the way back that hasn't, uh, that didn't really get a spotlight in the anime. The, the whole thing with, uh, with Oogaloo, right? She is just out here trying to protect Mikan. She's thought that she's been doing a good job this whole time. All she knows is that if Mikan's heart raises <laughs> somewhere around, because she doesn't have an eye to the outside world, unlike uh, Lilith. So all she knows is that, oh, something's going on with Mikan, so I gotta protect her and I gotta activate this this curse, but not really a curse in Oogaloo's mind. That's all she thinks. She thinks she's doing a great job. She sends a threat and she eliminates it. And that's pretty much it. Oh, you know, the one thing I forgot to write was that at some point when Oguda, uh, Oguda came on over and she's just like, yeah, I pretty much got most of these notes from Sakura because that's probably what Sakura had planned on doing. Creating a new vessel in order to put Oogaloo into that vessel before this whole thing that caused her core to just, uh, caused her to uh, dissipate into only her core. That was a detail that I haven't written in my notes, but I will write it down after this. But thought that was very nice as well. I love the way Oogaloo speaks. <laughs> the caveman speak is just so good, dude. Oogaloo, do a good job. <laughs> it is fantastic, dude. Like, Oogaloo comes in and I immediately already like her. <laughs> if, uh, if Liko hadn't gotten so much screen time, and everything, I would say Oogaloo is my favorite character. <laughs> Oogaloo seems like a good addition. Unfortunate that she came immediately after, uh, at, at once the, 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 the second season ends. But, you know, if a third season ever comes or whatever, you know, she'll be there. <laughs> So we had the whole magical sequence, right? The creation of the magic circle, uh, the creation of the vessel, and the uh, and the fried chicken. <laughs> I like that specifically, fried chicken. Everything uh, was was basically laid out on the table for them. Right? Ogre is just will be like, oh, I don't know if we can finish this by the end of the night or or or, or whatever. And we just kept having all these things that comes back on, right? Like, we need somebody who's really good at magic, okay, can instill the magic into this meat. Uh, also a really good chef, we've got Lego. We need a, a tail of like a magical creature or whatnot. We've got Shurasawa, which again, like his tail has just been under a bandage this whole time. <laughs> I think we saw his tail once before he, you know, broke his butt or something. And then it's been bandaged this whole time and just, we just had that whole moment of just them pulling hair from him. <laughs> and him being tied in, an, in, in something that's very definitely not bondage at all. <laughs> no, R.I.P. the Shirozawa damn dude. Fucking something awakened in Yugo at that point, like holy shit. And then it was something about like dirt. That was required to be on the mound, but uh, on the mound that Sakura was. And since Yuko had brought some dirt back because she just wanted to take dirt as like her first victory and all that, we we have it right, and we, we we've got and also like the whole meat thing, right? Andre's shop uh, runs a meat store, so we've got the meat from there. So I, I thought it was nice, just all the 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 things just coming back 
there was that, and we've got like the the sports day committee club coming on over to help. Like everybody, just just to show that everybody is just so fucking nice. Like what is it, like 11 p.m. or some shit? It's just like, hey, we need we need you to come on over. We need to summon a demon out here. And they're just like, all right, <laughs> we're coming on over. It just continued to show how lax the school is, but how lax the entire city is, just because this is the, the city that Sakura helped form. And speaking of Sakura, towards the end, we had Momo making a comparison to her, uh, to Yuko and Sakura, which is yet another comparison between her and Sakura. Oh, God, I just, I'm just repeating myself. But that's just, uh, that, that's just been a, a thing, right? That we, we uh, people see Sakura in Yuko, whether it's figuratively or literally. Everything went off without a hitch, and Oogaloo's now gotta go find a job. <laughs> Congratulations, Oogaloo, you are now an adult. <laughs> like, get on out of here. <laughs> we, we, we've got another character. That's very nice. Uh, again, 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 again. Very wholesome end to this whole thing. And it's technically kind of like an end of an arc <laughs> for Mikan. You know, Mikan's problem is now solved for the most part. Unless, you know, if she still feels the same way and an Oogaloo wants to protect her, maybe the whole thing will still come into play at some point, but just a little bit differently. Who knows? Who knows? But that's uh, pretty much all I really have to say about this episode. Again, I do think that it was rather straightforward. But feel free to write anything that I miss I'm missing right now. My thought on the anime as a whole, I think I already talked about what I felt for season one, so I'm not really going to talk about that. But season two, I definitely enjoyed a whole lot more. You know, I, I was talking about how like I felt like it didn't really have any favorite characters. And really, I think I kind of chose Yugo because that's like the person we had a lot of time with. And like if... Mikan had given was was more time had been given more time it would have been a lot but like she probably would have been my favorite character but man season two came and Liko arrived and Mili she just dominated over everybody for me <laughs> I love Liko dude I love Liko <laughs> Fantastic. But, you know, it's definitely not a super bias or anything, because I definitely do not have a bias towards fox slash cat girls. And <laughs> just say <laughs> that again, you know? I just like tails in general. <laughs> and she has a super fluffy tail. Since she is a fox, she's exactly what she should be, right? She, she plays jokes, she plays pranks, she's a little sly, but overall she has good intentions because that's kind of more or less a, a, a theme in this in this anime where, you know, everybody for the most part, they have, they have a rather big heart or they're rather kind, even if they do it in an unorthodox way <laughs> or they show it in an unorthodox way. Moving away from favorite characters and all that, I definitely enjoyed Momo's character a whole lot more this scene, uh, this series, this season, because she actually goes through a lot of character development and her and Yuko's relationship become very close, very, uh, very close to Yuri, but just not quite, you know? They just have not crossed that line yet. They're just so close. They're like fucking dancing on that goddamn fence right now <laughs> that's really that's really how that feels for me but i don't really mind it i, I i've been enjoying uh th their, their relationship and how it's been developing so far that reminds me for Mikan when she was when she first arrived I had talked about how she felt like a situational tsundere because she's trying to reject her her own feelings which is sort of what tsundere's are but then as we continue to see more about her you know she's not particularly a tsundere but like I still enjoyed her character but I think because She's not, like, you know, exuding a lot of Sunray tendencies. I'm just kind of like, ah, eh, you know, I think Mikan's fine. I still like her. I don't, I don't like her any less, but I don't like her any more. <laughs> not any more, but any space more. <laughs> you know, there's, uh, look, I just have a bias, all right, for characters, and that's, that's just how that goes. But again, it's not that I don't like her any less. I still enjoy Mikan's character, and anytime we get more Mikan, it's always great. I thought the whole mystery of finding where 
Sakura is, her location and such. I, I thought the first half of just doing that was very fun. I thought episode six was a really good finale-like episode. Uh, after that, in the second half, I kind of just feel a little... I, I felt a little meh. We had like two episodes where I was just kind of like... Kind of felt like it was just there for the most part. Even with the way that this, uh, we had a little bit more focus on Mikan, and then the way that we got introduced to Oogaloo and like kind of ending Mikan's curse for the most part, I assume. It kind of just felt, eh, you know, it's, it, it's uh, again, it, but it, it comes from the fact that everything kind of plays out without a hitch and it's just, there's not really any... Uh, there's not really any hurdles to, 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 to jump over, but that also comes from the fact that they technically already jumped over those hurdles, <laughs> right? Like they, they, they went on a bunch of side quests. And so by the time they get to like the main, one of the main quests that they need to go in order to progress the story, it's just like, oh, well, here's all the requirements that you need to do. It's just like, well, we, we already went through the fucking side quests. We, we've got all these items already. It's just like, oh shit, that's great. Fucking main quest done. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's how it feels and when I think about that you know in a game sense as this series keep pulling us back into the whole uh the, the gamey feeling I, I I understand it it's 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 nice <laughs> I definitely felt a little bit more distracted this season than I did last season I can't tell whether that's just me being unable to pay attention for the most part or if there's just a lot more things going on this uh, this season. I might go for both. <laughs> I, I have a harder time to pay attention and also there's just so many fucking things going on at the same time that it's really hard for me to add, try to latch my attention onto. But despite that, I do enjoy that we had gotten a lot of lore, a lot of plot, right? a lot of mystery and everything. So I thought everything uh, about that is still fine. I, I do think about how like, yeah, we solved the, the, the mystery of Sakura and, and the whole thing with Momo is that she, sorry, Yugo, is that she con she got to continue to grow stronger in order to protect the city and kind of, yeah, and then also get Sakura launched out of her, her chest and, and whatnot, you know, inside of her. <laughs> and and, and, and then the whole thing with Joshua is just like, ah, whatever, I guess we'll just continue keeping Joshua in this box. <laughs> We're not gonna figure out how to get him out of the box. It's okay, you know, he's, he, he, he'll always be here for us. <laughs> it's all right. And I know that some people mentioned that the narrator is Joshua. And um, just kind of over here like... I don't know that someone said that you could kind of figure it out that it was Joshua just by looking into the credits. To which it was like, oh, well, it's the credits in Japanese, the one that isn't translated. Because like when I actually look at the credits that's in English, I don't see it. Ah, uh, hold on. Before that, they should have the credits in here in English. But let me go check. Because like last time I checked in English, I did not find it at all. Yeah, no, they kind of only show the, the main Japanese vocal cast. They don't even show the narrator. <laughs> So, so like when I look at that, I'm just kind of like, okay. I don't know. I just, I just thought that it's an odd decision that if they showcase that in the Japanese credits, but not in the English credits, I don't know. Right? And since I can't read anime, <laughs> I can't read Japanese. I can't figure out whether that's actually a spoiler or not. So I've just kind of been keeping silent about it this whole time. But like, just kind of hearing about it in the comments, I'm just kind of like, whatever. I, I don't really, I, I'm just kind of like, it's, I don't know. Like if I figure it out in the show or something, that'd be better. But whatever, the show's over now. <laughs> the show's over now. And if season three comes and then somehow they showcase that in season three, then I'll have something to be mad at. <laughs> but until then, I'm just going to leave it in a fucking box for now. I don't really have too much else to say. I thought that the quality of the anime has been fine and very steady throughout the whole thing. I do like the new look on Momo in her dark side. It's very nice. I enjoy that. And I, I also like the uh, continuous use of Yuko's watcher McCallit rod <laughs> and how she's been using it so many times that, you know, she's getting 
good at turning it into different things that Momo might think are useless, but like, hey, that's still experience. She's still gaining experience and using her rod all the time. That is a, that is one way to say. <laughs> the music, I can't tell if it's using the same soundtrack and then adding something new as well. Or not, I mean, I know that the transformation, the magical girl transformation stuff is very much the same except with the new rendition of Momo's dark side uh, transformation but uh, other than that I can't figure out whether it's the same soundtrack but maybe a new different soundtrack in there as well which uh, it's totally fine but because of that I, I don't really have too much to say. I continue to enjoy the gamey feel that they continue to put into this and I like that they emphasize it with Yuko saying hey I, I really like video games and if we were to say that we're following in Yugo's perspective, it's understandable that that's how we kind of see it. It's kind of like uh, Yakuza, like a dragon, you know, why that's a turn base. It's because the main character loves video games and he always thinks of fights as turn base. <laughs> and that's why it's like that instead of like the typical uh, Yakuza, uh, Yakuza game style. Gameplay style. But other than that, I certainly enjoyed Season 2 a lot more than I did Season 1. Also, you know, Henri, I actually liked Henri for the most part, you know. <laughs> we did, did not see Lestifer, but when we did see her, I thought that she was pretty much fine as a character. I still kind of hold the same feeling for Ogura. Like, I know what she, what, what her part of the story is and I get it she makes elixirs and you know she helps them out in terms of like the magical side and all that so I definitely understand Ogura but I I'm still kind of the same I, I still share the same feeling as I did in season one for Ogura but Henri has changed for me so I I, I like that at the for, for the most part <laughs> but yeah other than that don't really have too much else to say but if I do I will write it in the description down below. Thank you guys for sticking around and I will see you guys when I see you.